In 2009, Oracle and HP, in collaboration, brought to the market Exadata. Exadata was the first modern converged infrastructure. Then later that year, VCE was formed. It was, came out as Acadia with the V-Block. And then a spate of announcements occurred over the next several years. And Wikibon in 2012, two years ago, sized the total available market for converged infrastructure at 400 billion. Here we are today in 2014, and Stu Miniman just returned from VCE's first ever analyst meeting, I think the first analyst meeting ever in the history of converged infrastructure that was purely dedicated to that topic. Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and we're here to break down that analyst meeting, find out what was said, uh, and just talk about the state of the market, Stu. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, you know, interesting, as you said, it, it is something that was, you know, purely for converged infrastructure and speaks to the mission of VCE, which is to simplify IT. They've got 1,400 people who all they do every day is, you know, design, build, sell, and service converged infrastructure, while everybody else, it's kind of part of the tool bag and, and something I definitely want to unpack with you here. Well, so the meeting was in San Diego, correct? Yeah, um, it was actually in lovely... Why, Car why San Diego? So, uh, <laughs> the, the, so VCE has had uh, the, their uh, customer advisory board for a couple of years now and, and Dave you know that the customers you have to take them somewhere nice so they originally wanted to have it uh, actually somewhere in the valley um, but these customers were coming from uh, all over the world some of the biggest customers only about 20 of them uh, we're not allowed to talk about them individually but was nice is uh, we actually did get to interact with them it's a small group uh, less than 20 analysts that were brought in uh, for this inaugural uh, analyst event now what about uh, VCE execs were they there in force yeah or? Dave the entire executive team was there everybody uh, from Praveen, uh, you know, the CEO, uh, Nina, who's their CMO, um, you know, all of their executives were there to interact with the customers and the analysts, lay out everything they've done, the vision for the future, and really to, you know, get advice from, you know, the, the analyst community and, and their, their important customers also. So before we get into the VCE uh, information, how would you characterize the state of so-called converged infrastructure, or you know, David Floyer calls it single managed entity SMEs. Uh, how would you characterize where we're at with uh, converged infrastructure? So I, I think we are really poised for you know just tremendous growth right now, Dave. We really see you know VCE seems to be hitting on all cylinders. Uh, some of the competition is really starting to gather around it. Uh, you you see both uh, the, you know the big companies uh, you know IBM just shifted off um, you know part of its uh, converged solution over to Lenovo. Um, you know, HP has obviously been a player in converged infrastructure, so everyone has an option out there. Plus, there's a number of startups that are trying to uh, get, especially into the mid market, where there's huge opportunity. As, as you said, Dave, we think there's you know a 400 uh, you know billion dollar uh, TAM for this by the time we get to 2017, uh, and you know it, it seems a little bit aggressive, but you know convergence uh, is definitely gaining steam. Well, TAM is a good way to hedge a forecast, right? Because it looks at the total available market, and the way we came up with that is we looked at the you know, entire server and storage uh, uh, business and the opportunity to bring networking together. And it and it's giant. I mean, whether it's 400, 200, 800, a trillion, it's, it's enormous. So what kind of data came out of the, uh, the analyst meeting? Yeah, so, so first of all, you know, it, it's about growth. If you look at VCE, they did over a billion dollars in 2013. And when I say they did over a billion, they're not giving exact figures, but they didn't just get past it. They were significantly past it. If you look at the Q1 numbers, I think EMC said they did like 70% year over year for the quarter, and growth for the entire year was up 45%. So that's significant now. Over a billion dollars, good momentum. Uh, there's no reason why EMC, uh, why VCE can't be a significant growth uh, here in 2014, over 800 customers, and that, that's another thing really to point out here. You know, VCE is not trying to be all things to all people. They're really focused on, you know, service providers and large enterprise shops. So, you know, there's only really, you know, kind of the top 2,000 CIOs that they're trying to reach with their message around the world. These are companies that either are service providers or their IT shop looks like a service provider. They do have some smaller offerings. VCE expanded their portfolio portfolio to have kind of the small of large configurations and they'll win those tactically and through the channel. The channel actually is, I, I'm trying to remember, uh, it's somewhere in the, the, the area of about 70% of their business is through channel partners uh, and especially the, the smaller configurations are all through the channel but even most of those smaller configurations tend to be a big company uh, that's deploying more smaller V blocks. So billion dollars in revenue is significant. We've heard about a billion dollar backlog. We've heard that both from BCE and Oracle, 
Um, it, it, to your knowledge, is this the first company to, to crack a billion dollar in revenue? Has Oracle got there yet? Or? Well, so if, if you look at the numbers from uh, you know the big analyst firms, uh, you know it depends. If you're an IBM uh, or an Oracle, and you can count uh, your, your licensing on top of that, they've, they've probably reached that billion. But from an infrastructure standpoint alone, uh, you know, absolutely. And of course, VCE is not only you know the server, the storage, and the network. They did launch their first software product uh, last year, uh, which is the uh, VCE Vision Insights. So still a lot of people have questioned sort of the merits of, of, of VCE. Of course, early on they were hiring like crazy, uh, spending a lot of money, and then a lot of people point to the the rift between you know who is it? I guess it's I guess it's VMware and Cisco, but ultimately it's EMC's federation, the acquisition of Nicera. How committed is, in your view, Cisco to the VCE? relationship. Yeah, so 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 good point and it, it's you have to look at this from from the various angles Dave. So first of all, uh, you know, from a Cisco and from an EMC standpoint, you know, VCE is very important. Not only are they over a billion dollars, but if you were to take uh, you know the the V block product and to look at it as a business unit inside either EMC or Cisco, Number one, it's probably their fastest growing product. And number two, it's on track to be a billion dollar business for either of these companies. So, you know, as long as that growth continues, I don't see there's any way that they're moving away from it. You know, look at Cisco especially. Uh, Cisco's UCS is, is really critical to its data center growth. And without its storage partners, which are not only VCE, but what EMC is doing with VSpecs, what NetApp's doing with FlexPod, they would not be getting into its larger accounts. The typical VCE engagement is a seven or eight you know, figure deal. So these are not you know, kind of the mid-market that Cisco's channel is really good at. These are large service providers, as I said, you know, sometimes you know, 10, 15, 20 million dollar deals where UCS is getting embedded in these accounts and becoming the standard, and, and that's what VCE helps break new ground. It's, it, people say, first of all, it's nothing but Cisco and EMC people. Um, if you look at the company, while the management team itself is almost exclusively Cisco and EMC, uh, I think I heard the number in the field, it's 70 to 80 percent of the field are non-parent company employees. So the 1,400 people, a lot of them came from service providers or end users or big uh, you know, VARs and system integrators that are helping VC get into these accounts. And secondly, you know, ah, the, these are guys that were just going to buy EMC or Cisco gear. Um, and while there are plenty of customers that will do that, there are not a a lot of new logos that are getting on the sheet that VCE is helping to knock down. How much of this business is incremental, Stu, versus sort of replacing existing mm -hmm. install base? Yeah, so, so uh, you know, it's, it's always a little tough to unpack this. You know, uh, VCE did a good job of putting customers in front of us that had used, you know, for example, there was one that was an HP customer um, that, you know, used HP servers everywhere and has now switched everything over um, <clears throat> to vBlock and, and, and UCS on there. Um, you know, the, the, they definitely, I've seen plenty of, you know, examples that, you know, they're displacing Oracle, they're displacing IBM, they're displacing HP. Um, but, you know, it, it, if you were to listen to, for the vendors themselves say, oh, this is, you know, 70%, you know, net new business. I, I'm not sure that it's quite that much, um, but there definitely are accounts that they're getting into that they wouldn't before um, because it's not just a best of breed sale. It's an entirely new sale to the front of the uh, front of the office having, uh, you know, that strategic discussion as to how am I going to really transform my business and uh, what, what's really kind of compelling about the VCE sale and the customers that we got to talk to is these are what you would call the change agents inside the business. This is not you know the traditional storage guy that's kicking and screaming not wanting to do anything different or even the networking guy that is you know very you know reticent to do you know any adjustments to his network you know these are guys that say I, I buy into the vision of you know automating my environment building you know, a, a cloud environment, some kind of hybrid cloud environment, and VCE is the enabler to that because it just makes my infrastructure look invisible, and therefore I can focus my IT on, on more strategic elements. So you're saying Cisco remains all in, so it could be potentially a billion dollar business over the next couple of years for, for Cisco, uh, and it's, I guess it's disruptive. I, I think mistakenly, uh, clearly mistakenly, back, I don't know, a couple, several years ago I wrote a blog, one of my predictions, year-end predictions, was Cisco will fall flat in its face and servers, and I think I think I didn't really think through how Cisco was going to market and how it would leverage EMC's channel. So I, I, I presume I'm wrong on that one. Cisco's successful in servers, well, would you say that? Right, or? so, so, so there, there, there's two big dynamics in servers. Number one is, you know, Cisco has taken over that performance part of the market. So IBM used to be the dominant player when it came to, you know, 
performance uh, in a blade server especially and, and also with the rack and the stacks. And as we saw, IBM exited the business. There was too much on pressure from them from Cisco uh, on the performance side as well as the ODMs on the cost side. So this is kind of the, the unsaid thing in the Cisco uh, you know, ecosystem is Cisco's helping to eat some of the legacy vendors, but you know, the Taiwanese guys that are making the you know, low margin white box servers are eating the entire business. So they consist of over 45% of the overall market. So the question is, how much further can Cisco continue to grow, and how much of it is just going to become commoditized on the server side over the next couple of years? And is it a good quality business for, for I mean, you're talking about going up against you know, Lenovo and, and ODMs. I mean, I think for EMC, it's essentially, essentially it's selling VNXs and, 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 and VMAXs, which is good business. Right. We know what the gross margins are on, on those products. Is it is it crappy business for Cisco? So so both UCS and VBlock are great margins for Cisco. I mean they're they're making real good. This is a value sale that uh, they're not uh, you know having to aggressively discount from what I hear in the marketplace. So no, this is good business. Uh, it you know, is a little bit overall dilutive to Cisco's, you know, overall margins, because as everybody knows, Cisco just has ridiculous margins just because they are so dominant in the networking space. So, high value, what about the TIM? So they're focused on essentially direct sales, I know they're going in with partners, but it's, it's the global 2000 that they're focused on. Yep. Uh, is it, well, I guess, I guess not, I mean, they're growing at, what'd you say, 45% of the 45% last year. So, so I, my question is, aren't they narrowing their, their TAM, but at 45% growth, I guess they're not worried about that, but at some point, right. You know, do they sort of run out of space to yep, sell into? Yeah, de definitely a big challenge for, and that's specifically for VCE. Cisco on the UCS line has grown, they've expanded their rack business, and some of the other solutions outside of VCE are trying to push down market and expand. Um, but when it comes to VCE, right, the, the question is, if I've got 800 plus customers, and I've got over a billion dollars, you know, definitely that, that company is on the road to, you know, two billion and maybe more. Um, but, uh, you know, right, H how many years from now will VCE hit a wall, and if there's not growth, where will they go from there? The other point I want to make is if you look at the next big battles for both EMC and Cisco in the software-defined space, uh, things like Viper from EMC and uh, the ACI solution on Cisco, uh, VCE should actually be, you know, one of the, the at the tip of the spear for these companies to be able to sell into these environments. The companies that are looking to, you know, use IT as a differentiator are going to, you know, look to VCE to help deliver, uh, you know, those Cisco and EMC type solutions. So where do things like NSX fit into this whole equation and uh, how does Cisco respond with NCME? Does, is that part of, of VBlock and VCE, or are those sort of separate vectors? Yeah, so uh, the, the, there definitely is a collision a little bit on, on, the, uh, on the VCE side. Uh, VCE very early came forward and said that when it came to you know, building the hardware for network, they are a Cisco networking company, and therefore ACI is the hardware they will sell. Um, so that means from an NSX standpoint, it doesn't preclude customers from doing it, but it is not, uh, you, because NSX isn't hardware, it, it is software, and can I do NSX you know, with an ACI? Well, th there's really nothing from an engineering standpoint that would allow it, but uh, there's a very different philosophy as to how those two were put together. So VCE definitely is at, at the middle of that. Um, and the, the other piece everybody would bring up, of course, is that Cisco bought Whiptail, um, which is uh, you know, an all flat solution uh, that fits at the server level, uh, and that obviously competes with things like what Extreme IO was doing, um, and VCE is going to offer both. So, you know, it, from a storage standpoint, it's EMC, but the way Cisco has branded it, it's actually UCS Invicta is what the, the it is now known at, so it's a server storage solution. So VCE is going to sell non-EMC flash? Sure, but th that's no different than I could have bought uh, a month from now. I could buy Fusion I/O in a Cisco UCS, and that would be supported no problem. I could buy, you know, th there's lots of flash boards I could put into the server because it's a server. And, and it's a server. Standard, and, right? and Dave, it's an interesting point. Is people th tend to think that VBlock is, you know, all things are black, you know, no flexibility. Um, and we've really seen VCE extend. It blew me away uh, about two and a half, three years ago. We had a call with them talking about databases, and VCE said, "You want to run bare metal on a VBlock?" No problem. We can do at least half of your environment. You want to run Hyper-V, you want to run uh, you know, environments that are other than VMware, we can put them into the environment. We're working through the, all of the support issues and we will give you the flexibility to offer that. So VCE has really expanded uh, to really have to have that balance between flexible enough to meet what the customers want, but sustainable and you know, uh, standard enough that customers can deploy it fast 
stay on a release stream and, and move forward. Okay, so you know, wave one was just get the concept of, of a block of infrastructure you know, into the marketplace. They've succeeded doing that. Kind of wave two seems to be opening up some you know, greater options and flexibility for customers and then maybe, maybe and that deals with the near term TAM expansion and then maybe longer term, you got to look at other, other approaches. But what about specifically, so, so part of the equation of course is VMware, what about alternative uh, platforms like say an OpenStack or, or Microsoft Hyper-V, where do those fit? Uh, is, is VCE sort of just saying, sorry, it's all VMware all the time, or? No, no, I, I actually they already, uh, the, there was a blog post from VCE last year that says if you want to run other hypervisors, we'll allow that. So specifically, Hyper-V and KVM, absolutely, and we did an interview last year with one of the execs at EMC World and said, what about OpenStack? And they said, you can expect to see vBlock become infrastructure for OpenStack uh, you know, in the near future. So, you know, message I hear loud and clear from VCE is, you know, yes, of course, you know, VMware is, is you know, a very important partner and should be a solution that they can uh, deploy. And by the way, if you look at Cisco, Cisco's looking for alternatives to VMware, but over 90% of UCSs go into VMware environments. Um, but, you know, you want Microsoft, you want KVM, you want OpenStack, uh, vBlock is going to be flexible on, on those type of deployments. So that's just a response to customers wanting choice. And Absolutely. Really. All right, what about, um, you know, early on it was very difficult to bring these three companies together. You know, it, HP for instance, IBM talks about the single throat uh, to choke, obviously Oracle, same thing. Is, does VCE really have a single throat to choke? How are the cultures meshing between VMware, Cisco, and EMC? Um, you know, VMware trying to be an independent software vendor. You know, we talked about some of the other, other tensions. What's your take on how those things are coming together? Yeah, the, the interesting thing, one of my biggest takeaways looking at VCE uh, is that they, they are a very different company than either of the parents. While the management teams, uh, you know, came from uh, Cisco and EMC, one of the kind of you know, funny conversations is, well, they know those cultures and would you like to rebuild those? Because if you want to have a customer focused approach, I mean, both Cisco and EMC, very focused on the customers, but you know, VCE you know, is, is really rallying around uh, you know, the entire um, really experience. The, you know, the VCE experience is what they're looking at. If you look at, you know, the president of VCE is Frank Houck, uh, who, who's, you know, years of building what was called at EMC the total customer experience. Um, and we kind of joked, you know, VCE should be renamed TCE. It's the, you know, total customer experience. It's really focused on making it super simple, uh, making the customers happy, making it, you know, so their jobs are so easy to do that everything can, can be consumed and managed the way you're supposed to. Um, and, you know, you're just going to buy it and keep buying more. Over 60% of VCE customers are repeat customers, uh, and you know the, the, they definitely are seeing you know huge growth inside those those customers. How much talk at the meeting uh, did VCE and the other analysts spend on on the competitive environment? I mean, you got obviously Exadata competes with its unique Red Stack. You got HP announced Sharks, you know, last year, and going you know after their 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 uh, uh, single SKU uh, approach. You got NetApp doing well with, with FlexPod, IBM, yes, they got, uh, they're, they're selling their x86 server business and so part of that converged infrastructure goes, but they've got patterns, they've got application affinity, they're building their own stack. What about the competitive outlook? What, how much discussion was uh, spent on that topic and what's your take on so, that? So definitely it was a topic that, that we discussed quite a bit with the analysts. Um, talking to the customers, um, it didn't seem that most of the customers actually had a lot of compet competition on the converged infrastructure. It, they had competition at some of the piece parts, but one of the things we heard quite a lot is that VCE is one of the few companies that really just leads with converged infrastructure, and that's all they do. So, you know, if you want to do something other than converged, obviously they'll hand it off to the parent companies to try to keep, still win those deals. Uh, but they said most of the time uh, when they were running into an HP or an IBM, uh, it was convergence was an option, but it wasn't necessarily the option they were pushing. It was only once VCE pushed things far that the competition kind of scrambled to get back. Um, absolutely, you know, I mean, Oracle and IBM are, are great at uh, putting together an entire solution. You know, I, IBM would, you know, if they're, they're selling especially the application, they're going to sell all the services. If they can just bundle in the infrastructure as part of it, that, that makes it a tougher deal to split out. Uh, and from an Oracle standpoint, you know, on big customers that have, you know, giant licensing deals, uh, 
uh, you know, Oracle would pull a lot, of, a lot of pressure just to get that entire red stack in there. So, uh, you know, those are definitely competitors that, you know, VCE doesn't win 100% of the time, uh, but, you know, VCE's uh, position is they're winning a lot of them, and most of the other competition is really below them. So, um, I, to be honest, I, I've said this many times, uh, VCE is very channel focused, and so is uh, NetApp with the FlexPod solution that they do with Cisco, and most of those channel partners are the same, and they will kind of shake out which use case this fits in, and there's not a ton of overlap there. What about HP? Uh, HP going hard after environments like uh, SAP HANA, um, you know, the Sharks announcement, they seem pretty pumped up. What's what's your take on HP? Where yeah, uh, you know, you know, HP I think has done a lot, Dave. I think HP could be even more serious about converged infrastructure. And to be honest, it wasn't one that we spent a lot of time on at, at VCE, which was kind of telling. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, so you ha you're you're positive on the story. I mean, if it's focused, uh, so you're 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 favorably disposed. But what about the challenges? What's uh, what's on VCE's to do list? In your so opinion? so first of all, Dave, you know. You know, when you say what is VCE in their role, you know, they, they definitely, um, you know, started, they had actually their first eight patents last year uh, that they'd applied for and going through. They had their first software product uh, that they launched yeah, with Vision. Uh, so, you know, what is VCE? If it's not, you know, just kind of the love child of, you know, Cisco and, and EMC, uh, it, it's building this experience, it's building um, really these processes. I mean, business processes are often, you know, underestimated as to how important they are. So it's great that customers can deploy things fast or deploy things reliably, um, and you know th that's that's an area that they can build on. But for how long? You know the competition can catch up on a lot of these. Uh, you know how do how do I educate the channel and how do I roll things out faster? And you know what happens in a couple of years if the growth slows down? Because that's the driver. You know EMC and Cisco. As long as they're bringing in new business and bringing in more business, that's going to be great. Um, but you know that that's a challenge down the road. But I could see in you know another three or four years if things slow down. Uh, you know, what would be the fate of uh, VCE? Well, the gain and share, I, I can't think, let's see, I think Amazon's got a big, they've got a, they got a $3 billion business that's growing probably at 60, 70% a year. You have VCE at a billion dollars growing at 45% a year. There aren't a lot of billion dollar businesses growing at that rate, so uh, looks like they have a lot of runway, big team. All right, Stu, thanks very much for, for coming on and breaking that down. Thanks, Dave. All right, and everybody, th thanks for watching this CUBE conversation. We'll see you next time. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman from Wikibon headquarters.